So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to record adjustments into the extended trial balance. Um, the adjustments are going to include closing stock, depreciation, accrued expenses, prepaid expenses, and provision for that for debts. Um, before we get started doing that, um, we're going to work on task 9.1. Um, and you'll notice a couple of things within task 9.1. Because we are applying adjustments, we have now moved the total row value of the trial balance, just moved them up a little bit. The values haven't changed, i.e. they still, uh, the total value still uh, calculates the entirety of the debit column and the same thing here. So you can see that the two columns balances and therefore it's correct. Um, but what we have got down here is all of the adjustments we are going to do. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is there is a couple of items that is being added to um, to to um, this uh, extended trial balance, which is the discount allowed, discount received, the sales returns, and the purchase returns, these four items here. Um, with those four items, um, discount allowed and discount received. Well, if we go in and look in the account here, we can see the discount received is re effectively recorded as um, an, a type of income. Although it isn't really, technically speaking, an income, it still has got the same effect, i.e. It, um, it increases profits. So it's sort of registered as a bit of an income. And the discount allowed is recorded as an expense. Again, it's not technically an expense, but it has the same impact. That is, it decreases profits. So um, discount received are effectively put down as a um, as a credit, so you can transfer it in here as income into profit and loss account. The discount allowed is recorded as a debit, so you can transfer it in here as an expense within the profit and loss account. Um, sales returns um, is um, a reduction in your sales in, in your income. So if income is on the credit side, you're going to want to reduce it, you must debit it. Therefore, sales return is a debit. Purchase returns is down as a credit. So it's a reduction in the purchases we have made, uh, purchases being a debit value, so a cost to the business. And therefore, if you want to reduce it, you need to credit it. So purchase returns are going to be a credit. Um, and again, they're sort of transferred here into the income, uh, into as, as income here, and sales return is, is almost put in as a, um, as a cost. Now, um, you can see I've already transferred each of the items like we did in the more simple uh, extended trial balance before. Um, and um, that's just to save a bit of time. But let's get started. Firstly, we can see down here we got uh, a number of um, um, adjustments we need to make. Closing stock, depreciation, accrual, a prepayment, and uh, um provision for doubtful debt that needs to be increased. So first, closing stock. So closing stock um, was valued at 39,160. So the way that that has been treated, uh, or we learned to treat it, is that we record the closing stock A within our profit and loss account, where it's actually as part of the cost of goods sold, where it effectively reduces the cost of goods sold. And, the and it's also recorded as a current asset, so a stock under the current asset here. So we can see 3,879 here, and the same thing here. So we've got to do the same thing. Um, another way of looking at it is just from a journal point of view. So we are debiting stock here, and that means it ends up in our balance sheet here, stock. And we are crediting the trade trading trading account, i.e., under our by our profit and loss account, with the closing stock crediting it. So we're going to do just that. Um, so closing stock, profit and loss, um, and the balance sheet here. So with the balance sheet, uh, we are going to debit it, um, and it's thirty nine thousand one hundred and sixty. And for the profit and loss account, we're going to credit it for 9,160. Um, you will notice that I recorded both transactions here in the adjustment column. 
Um, in terms of the adjustment column and why we use it is simply to be more systematic in the way we record our adjustments. So you can see I, I basically had to do a debit and a credit. And in doing that, the adjustment column balances. And that suggests to me that um, I've, I've started correctly in applying my adjustments. If they don't balance these two columns, you have done a, um, you made a mistake in the way that you have um, adjust made your adjustment. So this uh, this column basically helps us check that we are applying our adjustments correctly, and that's pretty useful. Um, I'm sure you tried with your profit when you made a profit loss account on a balance sheet to have made mistakes, and that those mistakes have been hard to pick up, and therefore it's a good way of um, of uh, ensuring that you are systematic in the way you record these items. So anyway, we recorded our adjustments into this column here. That's the first step. The next step is if effectively to transfer them into the relevant profit and loss account of balance sheet. So we transfer them exactly the same way as we've done before. So credit has always got to go to credit and debit has always got to go to debit. So closing stock, profit and loss, credit, we need to put it into the credit. So 39,160. Um, and closing stock balance sheet, 39,160, it's debit. So we need to put it in here, debit 39,160. And that is simply the way that we record um, closing stock.